British neon glowing nightlight plug with actual neon lamps inside. And there's something really strange about this. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I plug this in and I take the exposure off and then turn the light off, you'll see that the glow is strictly at the top. It's really dark at the bottom and that's strange. I'm just going to turn the lights back on. There's going to be a bit of a flash of light. And what's strange about that is that in the past, what was in these used to be really simple. It was the live and neutral terminal, and it would be a neon attached to one, a resistor bridging it over to another neon, and then the other neon going to the other terminal, and that's all that was in them. But there must be something different in these. Let's get the label off and open it up and see what they've done inside that's made it so one-sided. Have they updated it? Oh, maybe I'm regretting taking this label off. The label is very sticky. It's probably a safety label or something like that. Let's just open it up. So uh, I bought these when I was a kid. I really liked them. And I'm talking in my teens. Uh, so that's quite some time ago. So it's impressive that the same style is uh, still available. Oh, they have updated it. They've made it, they've made it safe. They've put a huge fuse inside it. Same arrangement that the pins can slide out and they're probably, well, they are held in by uh, this, uh, the, these uh, pins in the back of the plug top. Inside, it's covered in flux. Inside, they've got a stack of resistors. Okay, and the two little neons snugged right up against the uh, the fuse, which is why it was blocking the light. Right, one moment, please. I'm just going to doodle something out. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, so let's uh, go with a picture instead of a doodle. So, uh... This is a standard British plug top fuse. I wonder if they've been forced to put that in because if you consider it in the UK, our ring circuits, the power circuits, are pretty much delivering about a quarter of a thousand volts at, well, they're protected at 32 amps, but in the event of a fault, it's the current can be hundreds of amps. It could potentially be thousands of amps. It can be really high. And... Uh, so this is a, a typical ceramic fuse. It's got the uh, filling inside it, the dust inside to actually uh, quench the arc. It's basically an HRC, high rupture capacity type fuse. And it makes me wonder, did they have an incident with these or have they just been forced to do this? Because the design has been severely compromised by the addition of this fuse. It takes up so much space in here that trying to design around that but still fit in within these pillars here and on that small circuit board is actually really complex. It, it's quite a puzzle. The person who designed this must have spent a lot of time doing that because I'm guessing that... Uh, some of the design will be based around the fact that these are riveted on these connections. So you'd have to leave space around here during manufacture to rivet without damaging uh, adjacent components. That's probably also compromising the size of these neon indicator lamps because they're quite a small one. The original ones had the sort of big, fat neon lamps that uh, ran at quite... Uh, they, you could run them at decent current, but you didn't really need... They, they'd last for ages. They, they were good... So here's the back of the circuit board. It is flux central. I'm not sure where all the flux has come from. Maybe to try and compensate for this awful lead-free soda. And they tend to seem to use a lot more flux to... Ag aggressive flux to try and get that to bite in properly. But they have uh, 75k resistors. They've got two in series with each indicator. And that is possibly an improvement as well. Because the original ones had the two neon indicators and just one resistor. Which meant that the voltage had to be about 200 volts before it struck. So there's, this probably flickers less with a sort of mains frequency flicker. Because the, it only has to reach the striking voltage of one neon. Which is about 90 volts before... What happens with the neon is that the, as the voltage increases... The current's limited by those resistors. But as the voltage increases, around about 90 volts, these will just flash across. They've, it's called the strike voltage. But then the voltage, once it's struck, will drop down to about 50 volts. So what you end up is quite an odd current waveform. It, it, uh, the voltage rises and then it suddenly drops down and then uh, continues around the sine wave. But the, using a separate resistors per neon is a good idea because it does reduce that flicker slightly. Um, they've used two resistors probably for the voltage and power rating because that effectively adds up to 150k um, and that equates to with the neon and the voltage drop across the neon from the mains it equates to about 1.2 milliamps and 
with a quarter watt dissipation but spread across both these resistors so they're well within the rating. Um, I've drawn that outside the tracks here because it's not overly clear, partly because of the flux and partly because it's a green on green. But you can see where they've kept mega separation from uh, this area and the fuse is going from here to here through those resistors and then it's going to those neons and then it comes back down to the other terminal. It's a complex puzzle. It's a very complex puzzle. So I was uh, doodling some ideas. How would I do it if I got rid of that fuse, if I wanted to make this relatively safe? And my approach was to maybe use more resistors, but ultimately I get the feeling that uh, this is something that's probably been forced in them. By BS standards, they've said you have to include this big fat fuse. I suppose it's uh, protection against these plugs blowing up because ultimately in the UK when things go wrong, you've seen the UK USB plugs, the cheapy Chinese ones, they just detonate. They actually blow the lid right off and it's just a big sooty skid mark around it. Um, I wonder what risk there was of that in the past with these. But my approach here was it's quite a complex puzzle because the fact that the... Uh, you've got the two circuits and they're sort of crisscrossing over. It's a complex puzzle to design. So if you want to try this, get a piece of A4 paper, fold it in half, chamfer off the corner to match that circuit board and take a, a reasonable space at the bottom here for the round terminals. I shall just draw the round terminals in because they have to be sort of crimped and you want a decent space around that for that. But my approach was perhaps to have one neon pointing that way, one neon pointing that way, and then under each one a chain of four resistors, lower value so the voltage across them is much lower. And I think there's enough spacing here and enough rating that the risk of actually catastrophic failure is quite low. Uh, but this, uh, it took quite a few designs to actually come up with that uh, sort of layout. And again, there's not a lot of space in here. Um, it is very compromised. I mean... The original design of just basically it was a spot welded resistor between the two neons was about as simple as you could get and probably fair, fairly reliable too because the even a quarter watt resistor was within its voltage rating due to the drop across the two uh, neons off the mains voltage. But uh, it turns out this is complex. The person who designed this must have spent a lot of time coming up with this trying to fit that fuse in and ultimately the fact that half the light is compromised that you know only the top of the plug glows is just an unfortunate result of that. It's a complex thing to actually deal with. And all that complexity is purely down to this fuse. So there we go. Interesting to see the evolution. It's not a great evolution, but the person who designed it did a, a valiant job to uh, fit that fuse in without any... Could they have fitted an Ian up the way there? Could they have fitted one down here? I'm not really sure it would have complicated manufacturing. And there's a possibility that this is actually designed, this circuit board may be designed to go into other plugs with round pins and smaller areas. It might be a sort of universal board. But uh, there we go. It was a lot more complex and interesting than I thought it was going to be. Um, and it's a reasonable design solution to fit such a big fuse in. Um, so quite interesting. Much more interesting than I expected. <laughs>